Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty, and I'm still a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. Apologies, my voice is a little hoarse today. I also, if you're watching on YouTube, look very glamorous. This is not how I usually look. I just got home from a TIFF event and went, shoot, I haven't recorded my intro and outros yet for this week's amazing podcast. This is my first year doing TIFF, which stands for the Toronto International Film Festival. I've never really done much tiffing before. It's exhausting. It's fun. You get to meet a ton of great people, see a lot of incredible movies, stay out way past your bedtime. And uh, yeah, I went to a fantastic event this evening, uh, the Women in Film and Television. So it's, uh, WIFT is the acronym, Women in Film and Television Toronto, at the big CBC headquarters here in Toronto. It was absolutely fabulous. I have no voice because you do a lot of screaming when you're kind of chatting with people and getting to know people over, you know base as there is in these parties so i have no voice i apologize to buzz lear who is my guest this week what an incredible man buzz was a marketing and sales executive turned actor he has a career i should say should not a career sorry he did a film degree prior to his sales and marketing career so he was kind of a first act actor but then switched into that you know how it is quote unquote logical career path and then now is back pursuing his passion, acting. He has an incredible story. I'm so excited for you to hear it. Please enjoy Buzz Lear. Imagine these little elves. Who knows? Putting it all together at the end. Who knows? Who knows? Right. I don't ask questions. I just, just hand him my credit card. Yeah, well, and there you go, and you and you do your work. So, and you're good at it. I've watched several of your uh, oh, podcasts. You. And yeah, they're very good. You do a really good job. It's fun. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's that really means a lot. Yeah. It was funny. I was thinking about like it's coming up on a year. It'll be oh. a year since my first one was released in March, but I started recording in january of last oh, year okay all right so i'm like holy crow has it already been a year yeah this? good for you it feels like it's been longer because i think 2022 i don't know if you feel like this i feel like 2022 has been the longest year in the last couple just, it feels like that know. yeah it it could be um yeah <laughs> it probably yeah. it yeah i it, think like uh, with me though i mean well, I, 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 I made a huge career shift as, as we'll, we'll go into mm -hmm. but i made a huge career shift uh this year because i moved from chicago uh to la in february so i'm coming up on my end of my first year here in los angeles Ooh, so that's so exciting mm -hmm. yeah it is okay. it's real exciting with that Tell me your story. My How oh my gosh! Get into acting. Oh man! Well, I'll try to I'll try to keep this to at least a couple hours. Um, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go from there. No, uh, in all seriousness, Janet. Uh, first of all, really great to to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I am um, uh, very grateful about the career that I'm currently in as uh, as an actor uh, and a model. Um, and how it all started actually was that I uh, and I haven't always been in the acting and modeling career. So I started my college degree from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in acting and directing and a minor in communication. So I left uh, college uh, seeking my fame and fortune as an actor and jumped right out there. And in those days, which were at least 100 years ago, um, I, I started out uh, on stage, I did a lot of musical theater. I did a lot of, uh, you know, dinner theater was really hot then. And so I did a lot of that and uh, um, just kind of bounced around and did a lot of theater and thought, well, you know, and I didn't really do that much in TV and film. It was more live theater because that's what I was trained in uh, at the time. And so I did that for oh several years. Then I came out here to Los Angeles, gave it a shot uh, back in, you know, this is back in the 70s, uh, gave it a shot to be an actor then. Worked really hard at it, um, but probably not, you know, looking back when I reflect on it, probably not as hard as I could have. I, I didn't know a thing about it. And I was basically just like the stories go. I was a broke actor, you know, a broke artist uh, in L.A., um, you know, scraping my way by. And I ended up meeting some people that got me to a sales job 
it was like, Hey, you know, do you want to be, you want to work in sales? And it was like, okay. Um, never really thought of that, but okay. And so I started doing it and found out that I was pretty good at it. You know, I was a pretty good sales guy. And I think a lot of that had to do with my actor background, just because I did find sales and I ended up in the sales and marketing world. I really left the acting world. I started to make a decent income, met my eventual wife. We got married, uh, started having babies. And I thought, well, I better keep this responsible job. I better not try to be irresponsible and, you know, and all that. So I did. And I, and I built a really good career in that and I enjoyed it. Uh, it was, it was fulfilling. Uh, it fulfilled my creative side. It fulfilled my, uh, being around people, uh, being a salesperson allowed me to have that flexibility, um, with my home, you know, with taking care of the kids and stuff, gave me a lot of that flexibility, allowed me to travel. Um, and just my, every, every one of my days was different because I was always calling on different clients on different days and just found it to be that way. But then as the kids grew and they got, got moving on and, and finished their colleges and got married. And, uh, it was about, I'll, I'll fast forward here now to like, um, uh, six years ago, I was living in Chicago, uh, was on my third sales and marketing job in about four years. The industry was really changing. I was in the, uh, for 35 plus years, I was in the home furnishings industry. So I was a sales executive, marketing executive, um, rugs, pillows, bedding, china, glass, dinner, anything to do with home products. That's what I was in and built a pretty good career. Uh, what I got to be best at and what I was known for, what the companies hired me for was launching either new brands for them or new divisions or even new companies. I was really good at that. I loved, uh, I loved that. I was a little bit too ADD to stick around and manage. I was, I gotta admit, I was not a great manager, but I was, I could kick off a company in like no time at all. And I had a huge network of people, um, that I could count on to be in, in my camps. And so that's what was successful. But as companies more and more got purchased, by people and consolidated and there became fewer and fewer companies in the industry, it became less and less fun and uh, it became a harder job. And this last company that hired me moved me to Chicago and said, Hey, we're going to launch this division. And it was really exciting. And after I was there for one year, just out of the blue, uh, like about this time of year too, it was like the first part of December, right before the holidays, uh, they called up and said, well, we're not doing this anymore. We decided not to abandon this, this project. So you're done. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm in Chicago. You put me here. I have this job. And three weeks before Christmas, you're going to let me go. And they, and they did. So I, it, and they gave me a decent severance package, as decent as it could be at the time. But still, it was like, holy crap. I'm here in this city I've never lived in. I've been here a year. And now you're letting me go. It's like, oh, man. Okay. So I just buckled down and I really did some hard soul searching at the time. Uh, a lot of conversations with my children, which I'll talk about. I have four kids. Uh, they're all grown. My, my kids and I are very, very close. And um, I had good conversations with all of them and ran it all around and said, what if I jumped back? What if I really stopped all this and did what I want to do anyways, be an actor? And they're like, go for it, dad. So I threw down you know, the, the iPad and, and, the, and, and, and the, the order blanks to write orders. And I launched an acting career in Chicago in 2015, actually, is when that happened. So that's going on set. That was seven years ago. And I, I never looked back. There you go. <laughs> I never looked back. And so all those. And then I, so I jumped back up on the stage in Chicago. I was in several uh, theater. I did a bunch of live theater because that's a lot of what I knew. And then I went out and took a lot of classes and trained in TV and film and da 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 and did a lot of that and got better and better and eventually got an agent and started to book good commercials, book some primetime TV because there's a lot of TV that shoots in Chicago, all the Dick Wolf shows between Chicago Med, Fire, uh, uh, PD, all these shows. Um, and so I started to book pretty consistently and was building a pretty good career in Chicago, but always in the back of my mind. Los Angeles was always there. It's like, I have to go back to Los Angeles and really give this a shot or I'm never going to feel really good about myself. So that was always my goal was to build up my career, get educated enough and, 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 and learn those skills again between uh, 
TV, film, live theater, uh, improv, comedy, do some things. And I did all that stuff in Chicago and prepared myself to make this move, which will be a year uh, in 2023. So I'm, this is where I am. <laughs> so you moved to LA mm -hmm. for the second time in your life. Well, no, actually, actually, no. This is Ooh. the fourth time. Ooh. This is the fourth time that I've lived in LA. The first time was for acting and directing. The other two times was for sales and marketing. And now this fourth oh. time, yeah. So I and I, yeah. <laughs> so I, this is my fourth, my fourth tour of duty in LA. But but it's, I actually look at it as my first tour, really working as hard as I've ever worked at the craft of acting. Hmm. So before that, the first time I was out here, I was just a young, dumb kid, not understanding anything, you know, living, you know, coming from the Midwest with my Minnesota roots, uh, not having any clue what was going on in LA, you know? And so that one didn't last very long because I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. And, um, and this time, um, my eyes are much wider open. I'm, I'm a lot older. I'm a little bit wiser. Uh, I've got a good support staff with my, my children and my brothers and, and my family. And so all of that works. Um, but it was, uh, this time in LA, I did, like, I, I, as I was, I have told a lot of others, I didn't come fully unprepared. I did come, uh, carrying a very good, uh, talent management company in Carol Debo Talent Management. I've got a tremendous commercial agent here, uh, Taylor Talent Services, which are my commercial guys. I've got a modeling agency here, which is O Models. So I've got, and I've got other modeling agencies and other talent agencies around the country. So I'm not, un, I'm not like totally brand new, don't know what I'm doing because my agencies are working very hard. And um, I am at this point, I'm really, really assessing 2022. And I'm realizing that, it was a pretty successful year as up and down as this industry can be. And there can be those weeks of literally nothing. You could literally, literally stand here and I can audition three and four times a day, which I do, uh, and get nothing for weeks. And then all of a sudden you'll book four things in one day. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's a fee what I have found this market to be for me right now is really either feast or famine. And it's just been that way, um, all year, but, Hopefully it'll get a little, a little bit easier. You started with like a degree in like you in fine arts and acting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did were yes, you I did. supported by family to, to pursue that in university? Like what made you choose that? Yes. I mean, nobody, you know, my, my, my family, my mom and dad were extremely supportive of all of that. I come from a, I come from a family of five boys. <laughs> There's five of us. I'm number, I'm number two. A basketball um, team. We were, we were a, a pure basketball team. That's right. Uh, five boys, you know, God bless my mother. She did a great job and my dad too. Um, uh, they're both now gone, but um, they raised it. Uh, we were just, we were just very fortunate. You know, we grew up in Minneapolis. Um, and in the Midwest and we all played sports. We all got along. We all did great. And they never held us back from pursuing anything. I mean, it was always 100% support no matter what we did. There was, I don't ever remember a time with my mom and dad that they looked at me anyway and never said, you can't do that. Oh, why are you doing that? You, why do you want to be an actor? Why do you want to be a singer? Why do you want to, you know, I was a drummer. I played sports. I did, you know, we pretty much did, we were very lucky. We could do whatever we wanted to do growing up and had full support. And I've had that same support uh, on this side, um, on, on this trip. My oldest son keeps me in check. There's no doubt, mm. but that's his job. He feels like, dad, are you sure you got to You want to do this? You know? And so, and I, and I'm really grateful that he does that because he's that he, he keeps, he keeps me pretty honest. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? Like keeping you in check? Like, what does that mean? Uh, because I hear that a lot, right? I think a lot of artists, especially people who pursue a career in the arts from the get go, have a bit of like, head in the clouds mentality. <clears throat> I don't mean that as a negative thing. Because I think that's where a lot of creativity comes from. Yeah. But I think the biggest reason why people quit a career in the arts is because it is so discouraging because it can be so feast or famine. Oh, yep. So what does keeping you in check look like? Um, it looks like my, it looks like my bank account. 
You know, uh-huh. that's what keeps me. <laughs> that's kind of what, what keeps me in check. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, you're right. You know, we can, uh, the, the category of person or human, human that I'm in is probably much more on that. Yes. That right brain creative mm-hmm. side of my, of my life. And so I can get a little dreamy and my aspirations can be a little bit out there, not for me, but because I've never felt that I'm dreaming too big or set my goals or aspirations too high. Cause I don't, I believe that if I don't do that, it's never going to come true. I believe in manifesting. Uh, I do really do believe in that. I believe that if you say it's going to happen, it can happen. Um, not always, but at least you'll get into some space where it's there. But anyway, and I just know in myself, if I don't manifest it and try to keep it a, a very high level bar set for myself, I won't ever achieve it. I, you know, my, I, but I learned that in my, I really learned a lot of that during my sales and marketing career. You know, I was a vice president, VP of sales and marketing for several companies, several divisions, large companies. And so you have to set your goals, you know, your sales goals. And so I, I'm approaching this with the same vigor or, you know, uh, uh, vibrancy that I did as a salesperson saying, I'm going, my division or my sales are going to, I'm going to do, you know, $10 $10 million this year in my division. And this is how I'm going to do it. So I just set my goals to be the same. I'm going to do this many commercials this year. I'm going to do this many films. I'm going to do this much, this much TV, or this is what my goals are for the year. Uh, and I actually go, I've been going over those the last few years. I've been going over those with my agents at the beginning of the year or like right about this time of year saying, Hey, this is what I'm looking for in 2023. And even when I talk to my agencies, I'm kind of an outlier in that world but it's because of my sales and marketing background that I do approach it that way. And I do want to have meetings with my, uh, my colleagues and my superiors, basically my agencies who are trying, you know, I'm a product. That's how I view us as actors. I'm a, I'm really nothing more than a product. And who is my agent and managers? They're trying to sell my product, me. Mm. That's what they're selling. I'm selling me, but they are also doing that. And so that's the approach that I take with that. Huge correlations with your sales career. Big. You just said product sales, right? That's, that's really interesting. My one, my question about that is I know I've had not criticism from, from others when I talk about acting being a business, because like you have to approach it as a business. (laughs) Yeah. You have, you have to, because it is. You have to. The fear, though, is if you get too statistics and too logical and too business minded, that that takes away creativity. Have Absolutely. you found that? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. And I and I know and I know what you mean. There is a fine line there. So I, I try and, and I do. I don't ever go too far with it. Again, it's one of those keeping me in check, because actually, when I do set these goals or I've even set or even recapped what my year is, once I sit down in the next couple of days and recap my year and list it all out. These are the commercials I did. These are the TV shows I did. These are the films I did. These are the modeling where I assess 2022 and go, here's my accomplishments. I'll send that to my kids to say, this is how successful this year was this first year. And my goal for next year is whether it's to double it or do another third above that, or I don't know the number. I haven't really blown that through yet, but um, I do know what I'm trying to do in my mind. I just, try to put it on paper, but you're right. I don't want to get stuck in that mire of paperwork to say, Oh, these are my goals. And I got to, you know, do a spreadsheet and I got to do an Excel spreadsheet. I hate Excel spreadsheets. I never did figure out Excel spreadsheets. I mean, (laughs) my brain, my brain, I'm not a math brain. I'm an artistic guy. I'm one of those really bad at math guys, you know? (laughs) So, you know, and much, much less trying to technically, you know, do an Excel spreadsheet. What? I never, I literally never figured it out. It's like, come on, (laughs) don't, don't, don't make me do that. So I won't approach my career like that. I do, but I also don't want it to be too loosey goosey. I don't want it to be just, oh, I'm going to go out there and audition. Oh, I'm going to get this. Oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to do. No, I do approach this as a business every single day. You know, this is a, um, my, in fact, the way I like to say it for myself, and I've heard other actors say that too, but it's that my job, is auditioning. That's my daily job. My daily nine to five or 10 to 10 or seven to seven job is auditioning. And that is an unpaid position. Zero. You get paid zero to audition, right? 
And then the, 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 the cream is when you get the gig. That's, that's like the great thing. You know, that's like, and, and that's when I look at that and think, okay, great. I've got a gig today. I basically get the day off from my job because I've got a gig for the day. Get it? Get oh, that? I so it's like, like that. Yeah, so my job is auditioning. But this oh, week, I've had two days off because I've got I've had two really good gigs this week. And I've got another one coming up on Monday. So it's like I'm going to have a three-day weekend. <laughs> that is a... I have, that is a fantastic way to, again, my logical brain that likes schedules and yeah. lists yeah. loves that. <laughs> loves yeah. that so much. Yeah, because that, 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 because there isn't a day. I am so grateful every day that I get to stand in front of a camera. I, it, it's like, really, this is what I get to do. And they're going to literally pay me to do this. I get chills. I still, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the goofiest little you know, photo shoot with some photographer building his uh, portfolio that's going to pay me 200 bucks to stand there for a couple hours, you know? That is just as thrilling and exciting to me as doing those five-figure commercials that take three or four days to shoot, you know, or TV show where you're there for several days on a shoot. I don't care what it is. I can stand in front of my iPad. When I stand in front of my iPad and audition and I nail an audition, it's like, yes, that was really good. That was really good. I felt really good about that. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't, it's just that, that's just the approach that I have to take to this. Take me back to when you were in Chicago and you made okay. the conscious decision with your, with your kids involved <laughs> to now pursue acting again. Why acting again? Because it, um, because it had never, it had never left my mind. I mean that, you know, or my, my bot, my soul, my soul always told me myself that this is what you were meant to do. And that's what you need to do. And so that's what I did. I, you know, I can't say that I never did anything over those 35 years. I did, I did some things. Uh, in fact, in the mid two thousands, I, <laughs> out of the blue, uh, I was in between sales jobs and I was in, be so I was just kind of floundering going, okay, what am I going to do now? And I've got you know, three kids in college and going, holy crap, I got to do something. And I had an, I did have an agent in San Francisco. I raised all my family in the Bay area. So we're a San Francisco family lived up there for 35 years. And, um, I've got four kids, two, two, two boys, two girls. Uh, the two boys are the oldest and the two girls are the, are the babies, but we had four kids in six years. So it was like, boop, they're all pretty close together. Um, but in the mid 2000s, I was between companies and I had an agent in San Francisco that I would audition from time to time. Mostly did a lot of modeling up there because they had my book and I had some good shots and I happened to be blessed with pretty good hair and, you know, I'm in <laughs> pretty good jeans and I keep myself healthy and I work at it and it works. Um, and I, and I got a call from my agent. She goes, Hey, there's this, there's this show on this network which was fairly new at the time. This is in 2004, 2005 um, on HGTV, Home and Garden Television. And they said, there's this, and they, they knew, but uh, also one of my back, one of the side gigs was I, I'm a carpenter. So I'm pretty good with uh, tools and I'm pretty good at building stuff and repairing things and doing all that. So I, I had always put that on as one of my skills. I put that on there that I'm a carpenter. So my agent out of the blue calls me and goes, I know you have this thing that you're a carpenter, but there's this show on HGTV that's auditioning. They want, they're looking for hosts. Um, you think you could be like a handyman on, a, on that? I go, yeah, of course I can. I, I, I do that all the time. So I went in and I auditioned for this show called House Detective. And this was in like August of 2004. And I went and auditioned. And you had to build something for your audition. You had to go in and build something on camera and have fun and talk about it and do this and do that. And so I went in there and built this incredible faux brick wall, painted it, did all this really cool stuff, and it turned out really great. And they were all having a great time. There were all these casting directors and actor, you know, people out there. And was like, oh, that was great. Thank you very much. So I left and didn't think anything of it. Well, I'll never forget, on Christmas Eve of 2004, I, I get this call and it's this production guy in um, San Francisco. And he goes, Hey, are you buzzed? I go, yeah. He goes, um, are you still available to uh, host that HGTV show? I go, 
Wow. And it was one of those where it was like, wow, that was like August. That was like five months ago. He goes, well, they'd like to, they'd like to uh, book you and, can't, and sign you to a contract to do 13 episodes of this show. I'm like, what? And so it was like, okay. So I did that. And I, I had just gotten another sales job, quit the sales job, took this job, and it went on for five years. And the next thing you know, I had done 65 episodes, five seasons of this show called House Detective. And that's, you know, you still can find episodes out there. But we were, House Detective was one of the pioneers of that entire HGTV world. Mm. Uh, at the time, the production company was Edelman Productions in uh, Tiburon, California which is in, uh, in the um, East Bay. It's on the Marin County. It's in Marin County on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it was Steve Edelman. And he had, at the time, Edelman Productions had like three or four shows running, um, one on, uh, on HGTV. One show was called Curb Appeal. The other was mm. Landscape, Landscape Smarts. And then they had House Detective. So he had, Steve had, he basically owned the early days of HGTV content. He had three big shows running at that time. And I ended up doing 65 episodes and fixing 65 houses over the next five seasons. It went on for, you know, five full seasons of 13 episodes a season. And I had a blast. And then it ended, it ended in 2000, like 2000, late 2010. We didn't get renewed. And then I had to go back and get another sales job because at the time Scripps Network, they wouldn't let you go back on the air as a host for two more years. Had you, if you'd already been on it's like one of these, it's kind of like Dick Wolf productions in Chicago. If you're on Chicago PD or mad or fire uh, and you have a speaking role uh, during a particular season, you can't be on for the rest of the season and you can't be on any of the other shows. They, yeah. I, I get it. I get yeah. it. They don't want you. They don't want to go, Hey, that guy died in Chicago yeah. fire. Now all of a sudden he showed now up. He's a on, cop. Yeah. Now he's a cop on PD. You know, how'd that happen? You know, people pick that up, I guess. I, yeah. I don't know. I've never, I've never been that cognizant to understand that, but you know, the way they do. Anyway, that's my little midlife crisis there to be an actor, which was like, the coolest thing ever to do that. It was, you know, pure reality TV. It was being shot with one camera on videotape. This is before digital. This is before any of that stuff. You know, they were loading that, you know, cam, our, 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 we had the same crew for the entire time we were there. So we all became this huge family uh, and did all these shows, you know, loading up the film and that great big camera, you know, that big, those big old cameras that he shoots with on his shoulder. And yeah, it was, it was a fun run. That was a fun run. It was really great. And got a lot out of that. So Has there been that was a, that was the one thing I did. So I did that. It ended at like right around the end of 2010. And then I went back into sales and that, that's when I ended up with like three jobs over four years and finally mm. said, screw, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did. Has my, I know been... my story, my stories can be a little long winded, but no, I'm, it's I, all good. I'm... They're lovely. <laughs> I, I'm old, so I've got a lot of stories, you know? <laughs> well, so that is my next question, right? So yeah. I, I, have you noticed anything that's been surprising to you now that you're back in the industry from like when you were in it before? Has there anything that's oh. been surprising now? No, it's just all changed. It's 180 degrees difference. I mean, other than, you know, other than rarely going into an audition room, it's almost all done at home on my own camera, you know, set up my own ring lights, put on my own sound, get my right backdrops, you know, do your own wardrobe, shoot it, edit it, send it, you know, be the lighting guy, be the director, be the, you know, be the actor, you know, be the editor <laughs> and then, and then send your audition. I mean, but that's the world we're in. And, and personally, I don't think that'll ever change. I think that is going to be locked in at least in first rounds of auditions. I don't know that anytime you get that first round where that first round says, okay, people submit for this commercial. You know, here's a target commercial. Here's the role you submit all, you know, and out here in Los Angeles, they'll get thousands of submissions. So it's, it's a matter of going, the only time you're going to get called back and go into a room is on that, at least the second callback. So that, but so what I'm feeling good about is that my callback ratio right now to first submission is very high. I'm getting called back at about 50% right now, which 
Well, that means one out of every two commercials, I'm getting a call back. Now, what's my ultimate booking number? Much lower than that. I mean, I'm booking probably less than 10% of the projects that I'm, I'm going in for. Um, but again, there's that marketing brain kicking in that I don't, that I don't know that a lot of actors look at it from that respect. But I, I also know from my agencies that to book on those numbers is very high. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm booking more than most. Mm -hmm. So that keeps me feeling pretty good about, it. even though for me, it's never enough. It'll never be enough. You know? <laughs> Do you find now and so I've been told this, and I like this mentality because I'm really competitive. I used to play very high-level competitive sports. As we so, age, so did I, and so did my children. My children yeah. were big soccer, big soccer players. My cool. uh, my kids were two of them played college, big time college soccer. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Do you find as you age in this industry? Do you find like there's there's less and less actors in your age category? Also mm -hmm. less and less roles for your age category, but I'm of the feeling just because I'm noticing this as a, as a female in the industry going beyond 40, um, you know, the number of auditions just plummets because there aren't that many roles, but there aren't many of us left because it's like survivor. We just needed to outlast <laughs> right. everyone else. Right. That's like, right. Do you find, do you feel that as, as you kind of, um, kind of aged into the industry? I think I would, I, I, the only times, Janet, that I find that I feel that is when I do go into a room and mm -hmm. I was in a room, I went into a live audition yesterday, a callback yesterday, and I walk in and there were like five of us <laughs> that all looked like we were there for the same thing. Um, the, di the, the difference that I see is that when I get called in for, you know, particularly, you know, a, a 60 or even 70, you know. I mean, I'll be, I'm 71 and I'll be, I'll be 72 in May. So I'm, I'm up, you know, I'm a senior, right? But a lot of 70 year old guys look a lot older than that. Yes. And so I, I, I definitely can book and have booked several 55, 50 year old projects mm -hmm. this year. Cause I, I, yeah. I can tend to play that. I have that. I don't know what it is, but I have a little bit better feel for the younger part of it. But that's when I feel like, yes, there's less and less people. Here's my other indication on less or less people. My other, <laughs> my other story that I tell, I'm also a runner. Uh, I've been a competitive runner for a long time. And, um, the last 10 K that I, uh, that I, that I ran was last fall. I haven't run any races since I've been here in LA. My last fall, I ran a 10 uh, K with my daughter in Nashville. And, um, in the, in those, this is one of those rock and roll series races. I don't know if you know running races, but anyway, yeah. they're, they're a fun race and they tend to get 10 or 15,000 people running in these races in most cities that they go to. So there were probably over 10,000 people in this race, uh, in, in uh, Nashville that day. And in my 10 K I won the age group. I won that age group. Okay. But there were only three of us in the age group. This is 70, no 70 one plus needs to know that. No, but you never, oh, of course not. You never tell me. I, I, you know, I, I mean, even if I came in third, I would have said I'm in the top three in my age group. Yes. Made the top three, you know, <laughs> but, you, but that's the, there's your story about natural attrition in the age group. You know, yeah. how many 70 year old runners are there still out there competing? How many 70 year old men are out here as actors yes. competing? You know, and, and, it, and it is, I know, I do know that it's less, I'm hearing that from my agencies and, but then what happens to me is I have, and we all do, and this is what I'm also learning is that we all, as we age, end up with our own little look and category that we fit into. So I don't, you know, what I don't fit into is I don't fit into that. There's an every man category. I'm not that every man with balding hair and a, you know, an extended tummy and, you know, and I'm, you know, not five, six, I'm five eleven, So I'm a decent size. I fit into a 42 regular suit. So I'm in good shape. So I'm in a specific category. And that guy that is a little more roly poly has, you know, has the, has the rosy cheeks, has the balding hair. That's another category. I, and I don't fit that, nor does he fit mine. So, but when you're in your thirties and forties, 
those categories, those little categories, the, the, the micro categories are a lot less. Unless mm. you're unless you're quirky and you've got your ears are sticking out and you're bald or you've got, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, Absolutely. those specific looks. And, and I find very, very, you know, I love that when you look at an audition, sometimes that gets so specific <laughs> that ma- it makes me crazy. I saw one the other day. Uh, it's not, it doesn't make me crazy. It's just like, wow, could they be any more specific? Here was a role for a Target commercial and they were looking for people that were in wheelchairs, amputees that were in a wheelchair. I mean, how much more micro, I, 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 I would, I'm just curious when I see those kinds of things as to, mm-hmm. wow. I mean, that's yeah. so great that they're looking for that. But h- how many of those people are in this world that are even submitting for this kind of a thing? Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I find it to be fascinating to see that yeah. kind of stuff. I was talking recently with an actor who is, a he was in uh the mandalorian and he is a very character face right yeah 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 very character and he's like i don't audition very often because i like he's got the most unique interesting face i've ever seen but he knows if he gets an audition he's gonna book it he's gonna book exactly many like him yeah it's so interesting to have it's again so it's the visual industry of it, right? Oh my gosh! I was at an I was at an audition yes um, last week, and I walk in. It's, it was for one of the cruise lines or something, and 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 they obviously were looking for a lot of really different stuff. I thought I was there for this what one role as a as a, another half of a of a grandparent in this role, right? There were people in there jug like a circus. There were jugglers. There were guys up on stilts walking around. I mean, like, you know, I'm like, I felt like I was at a circus. It was like, this is, this is what this casting is. You know, how many people know how to walk around on stilts? I guess a lot. There were like four guys there standing up on stilts. It never ceases to amaze me though. It's just like, so, so, but it also at the same time gives me hope. I know I fit into a category. So when I do hit that category, I do feel really good about booking it. And, and most of the time I can be right. If it's a, I play a doctor really well. I play a lawyer really well. I play a mm-hmm. businessman very well. And so when I get those that have even technical verbiage on, on some kind of a monologue, direct the camera, um, I feel really good about all those auditions. It's like, mm. yeah, I pretty much nailed that. And, uh, and a lot of times I'll get it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a funny world, but I'm, I'm having more fun right now in my life than I've ever had before. That I can tell you. That's awesome. You know, and I basically, I like and I launched, and I, and I launched a brand new career at 66 years old, 67 years old. So what can I tell you? Do you have any advice for anyone who might be interested in doing what you did launch a career after their first act? An act? Yeah, just, well, just keep, it's just to keep going. You know, I, I have never, I have never had any kind of a desire to retire. It's retirement is to me just this, I don't know. It's this odd thing. Um, I don't ever want to stop. I don't think, I don't think that slowing down or stopping moving would do me any, any good. I think it would do me harm. And I think that the guy, the friends that I have that have decided to retire and move to Florida and, you know, go to dinner with their wife every day and join the country club and play golf and all that stuff, you know, it's all well and good, but that is nowhere, anywhere near my brain. It doesn't, that doesn't cross my brain at all. I, I intend to be a successful actor. Uh, I don't care what it takes to do that. Um, I am one day going to walk up on that stage and, and get my Academy Award or get my Emmy and thank the people that have been supporting me. I mean, that's just, those are my goals. And are they lofty? Yeah, they are. Is the bar pretty high? Damn high. Uh, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I just, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Is that for everybody? Is that for the faint of heart? No. If you feel like you want to retire, then go ahead and retire. You know, more power, more power to you. Um, I, I just, I can't do that. It's just not in my DNA. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, I just love this work and it, you know, the other side of it is, 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 uh, is where's that luck, you know, cause it does take an element of luck in this, in this industry. 
to hit that, you know, that gold vein that you're going to, that you can hit, you know, it's, it's getting that one role on a series or one role on an episodic or one role in a film that is just going to be, you know, that golden, uh, that golden ticket, basically, I guess. Um, and I, that's what I keep, I, I keep going after that myself. Um, but I have decided that I did, I know I did decide this year and I joined a, I joined a comedy improv group out in the Valley. So I'm doing improv and, and stuff. And I find that to be so fun. And it's also been very, very good for the acting chops, you know, just to get up on stage and do, there's nothing like being frightened to stand up there and do improv and go, Whoa, okay. I can do that. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of rambling now, but I'm just, uh, when I reflect on all of it and, and just know that, what I oh you went away again oh now you're back oh, I'm back you're back now you're down you're back. now you're back um, that what what I really love uh, my two loves right now that I want more of and that is film I, film and episodic TV those are the two things that I would love to do yes the commercials are great because the commercials pay the bills right now and that's you know that, that and that's how I look at it too my my ultimate goal in this world of acting would be a film role or a big, nice episodic TV thing. And I've auditioned for two big films this year, made it through the first cuts on both um, and three big TV episodics uh, through my talent management company. And all three of the auditions went extremely well. I got into the, into the room with casting directors and did my thing. And it's interesting because ultimately in, all situations they went with people that they knew and had worked with mm. and me being me being a newbie um it's hard to say i've got to pay my dues because i don't know that i've got as much time as a 20 year old to pay his dues so i feel like it's a little bit shorter <laughs> the time frame at least in my head you know it's like ah let's do this but you know it, it, and that that's when i get a little bit you know you go God, why would you go with somebody or why not give a, a new face and a new guy, a, you know, a shot, give me a, give me a shot here, you know, but it'll come. It'll come. Patience is not one of my best virtues. I'm only, I'm only patient when I'm in a fishing boat with a cigar. Then I'm, then I could sit there and fish all day. I'm good. But <laughs> other than that, no. <laughs> so how do you, how do you kind of keep the fire going when it can be pretty discouraging? I, 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 it's a real conscious effort to do that because it is, it's very hard to go. Like I was alluding to the fact that I know that I do. I mean, even this week I've done three auditions that I felt I did extremely well, but I can't sit and dwell on them. I, I, I do an audition. That's that. Put the paper away and go, that's that. Submit it, move on. Uh, and there are some that you have in the back of your mind that go, God, I hope I hear from that one. I really want that one. I really want that one. Uh, but when they don't come after a couple of days, it's like, move on, move on. Got to keep, got to keep moving on. You know, um, I remember one of the things that always rings in my brain. I remember a, a, a moment with my 12 year old, my oldest son was 12 and he was a big video gamer. He still is at 36. But he was a big video gamer, and I, I've never really understood or really cared about video games. I didn't grow up with them, so I don't know them. And I remember trying to play with him, and, you know, he would just kill me. It's like I move dead, dead, dead. So I said, Charlie, I remember saying to him, how come I keep dying? And he looked at me and says, Dad, you can't stop. When you stop, you die. you got to keep moving to stay alive. you got to keep moving. So – that's the whole story about moving. You got to keep moving if you want to stay alive. At least that's what I put in my brain. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep moving. Cause if I don't, it'll be over. Yeah. You just got to stay you, ahead of it. <laughs> would your kids describe you now as an actor? How would they describe their dad? An actor that I'm an actor. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I, and, and, I, and, and that's a very good question because even for me, that took me about three years to finally be able to say that. And it was really finally this one friend of mine, because they said, what do you tell people you do when, when you meet them? You know, because always everybody asks you, what do you do? What do you do? And it's always a funny response when you do say, oh, I'm an actor. They, um, it's almost like they look at you and go, 
you you do what? Is that is that really a job? Is that really a job? Well, see, I don't consider it a job. I consider it, you know, a blessing. But it's like, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> and it's you know, and I have a and the only other one of my children that is anywhere near my what I do. My youngest daughter uh, is a is a country music artist, and uh, she's got a very very strong career going on. And uh, she and I can relate on a lot of levels because she's also starting to do some acting. She's doing some, um, she does all her, you know, she's in her music videos and they produce those a lot. She was, um, my daughter was top 10 American idol a couple of years ago. And, and so her career is like skyrocketing right now. She's got a great management company. She just launched her first EP album launch this fall. And, um, her career. She's on the road right now. She's touring right now. She just, just got off the road with, she was out there. She opened for Jimmy Allen a few weeks ago, who's a big name in the country music business. And um, yeah, she's, she's out there. She's doing her thing and she and I can relate on a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, it, yeah. So it's been fun. That, yeah. Anyway. Do you have a, do you have a favorite on set memory or story? Oh boy. Um, well, I mean, I, I have a couple of moments. I mean, there's, there's these moments. I mean, when I was in Chicago, um, it was, I mean, it was, it was great to work. I've worked with some pretty interesting, really some good people. I worked on a, there was a small, there was a TV series that only lasted one season, but I had a really nice little role on it. Um, it was called Next, N-E-X-T. And the, the lead actor in that series was John Slathery. Do you remember that name? He was in Mad Men. He was in Mad Men, oh, that series okay. yeah, with John yeah. Hamm. He was in yes. Mad Men. And so he was the lead on that. So I got to work with John Slathery, and that was like a real honor. Um, I did work with Anne Hesch, wow. the late Anne Hesch. Uh, she was on Chicago PD. I don't know if you remember that. She was on... She was on for a couple of seasons of Chicago PD and did that. And that was kind of fun. Um, no, there's, 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 there's some, always some funny moments when you're on set with, with, with different things. I think if I, I mean, if I can talk about funny moments on set, I would have to go back to my series of HGTV because that was five years of really funny stuff with these, you know, working, working with homeowners on a weekly basis, you know, and, and it, yeah, there's some really funny stories about trying to, you know, the funniest stories are me, you know, I was the host of the show. So it looked like I fixed everything, you know, but literally I would be the guy they go, okay, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to cut this pipe and then I'm going to put in this, these bearings and I'm going to make this, I'm going to do this whole tube for this, to put in a brand new toilet. Put, have you ever installed a toilet? So, okay, yeah, well, let's install a toilet. Well, I would cut the hole, but I would only cut like the first two inches. And then they would cut and then the guy would come in and finish it. And then I would, and then I would come in and finish the cut, you know, or we would be building a deck. We'd be building a deck and they would, I would lay the frame out and then I would pound the first nail and the first board. And then they bring in this crew and they would pound all the nails in. So I don't mean to bust your bubble that, that reality TV that, I, you know, especially on those fix it shows that that guy is doing all the fixing. I didn't, there was no way they would have been there for seven years doing some of the projects, you know, if they left it to me. So yeah, they, they, it, it looked like I, it looked like I could do anything, you know, anything electrical, anything with construction, anything with, you know, it was, you know, so I, there's a lot of, I have a, a lot of funny stories about that world. Um, and, and, and then, and most recently I did, the most recent thing I did is I got to do a, uh, I did a casino commercial shoot up in Seattle and we were there for, gosh, we were there for like five days. And uh, the director on that set uh, for that whole week and what a nice man, you know, remember the name Jason Priestley? You know, uh, yeah, you know, he went to my high school. 90210. He went to my high school. He was my Canadian director. Boy. Yeah, I know. He was just on our. Um, what? he was the, he was the director on our, um, uh, shoot up in Seattle. In That's fact, such a small world. he, well, he was leaving. He's on a TV show that's filming in Toronto right now. Yes. There's, you know what it is? I mean, are you familiar with it? I am. 
Oh, yeah. okay. Well, <laughs> in fact, he when he finished up, he goes, he kept, he goes, I, I, I gotta go. And then his hair was too long, and he was always apologizing all week about my hair is never like this, but they're making me keep it this long because I have to go back to Toronto. I'm shooting a a TV show in Toronto, and I've got more episodes to do. So when I finish, and, but he's a, he's a what a I mean, what a director to work with this guy. What a I good guy. I didn't know he was directing. That is so cool. Neither did any of us. And when he showed, because he wasn't even on the call sheets, they, they, you know, they're so protective of this, you know, because he's a pretty big star, you know, he's a, mm-hmm. he's, he's a pretty big star, but for him to be directing this was really, and he was, I, I, I got to tell you, I mean, I've worked with a lot of directors. This guy was one of the better ones I've ever worked with because he also oh. knew everything about our side of the world. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, you know, I want you to do that, 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 and you guys are doing this. He, he was just a real pleasure to work with. And um, really yes, cool. he did tell us all about his Canadian roots, and he lives in Nashville. He actually lives oh, in I didn't Nashville. Know that. He doesn't. He doesn't even live in L.A. No. Huh. He cool. he probably has a home up in Toronto too, but I don't know. You know, I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice? Oh boy. Well, I, I mean, the only again, the only words of wisdom and advice that I could is just to keep following your passion. I mean, it's just all about passion and, and follow what your body and your mind is wanting you to do. I mean, it's just that, it's that simple. Uh, for me, it's that simple. It might not be that simple for people, but um, don't ever give up on your dreams. It just, it, it, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't follow this passion and these dreams, you know? Um and, and just if, if you're, you know, if you've got any talent at all, and the only other thing that I know that I've recently kind of stumbled upon is somebody explaining that there's a lot of talented people in the world. So we're going to be all up against a lot of talent out there. And I know that I am talented, like are a lot of actors uh, have a lot of talent. But what separates the talent from the ones that succeed and become highly successful is the obsession, is to be obsessive about it. And that doesn't mean in a bad way. It means in a good way, because I just, I know that I'm completely obsessive. And so when I heard this person talk about talent and obsession equals success, I, I fit into that category, but not everybody does. There are those actors, just like there are those people in any business world job, whether they're CEOs or whether they're salespeople or whether they're actors or whether they're athletes or whoever they are. There's a lot of talent, but think about the people that are obsessed and talented, the LeBron James of the world, the Keanu Reeves of the world, the Tom Hanks of the world, the Denzel Washington's of the world. How are they, those people? That's because I believe that they're obsessed as well as talented. And uh, that's the category I want to fall into. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you, Buzz, for being my guest this week. I hope all of you who are living in Toronto or around the area have had a great TIFF. I hope those of you who can't stand TIFF are so excited that it's almost over and the city will kind of go back to a little bit uh, normal. I'm excited to sleep for the next four weeks and hopefully, uh, you know, get my voice back. (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I hope you'll join me again next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye.